so now I am leaving Focus. Good morning, everyone. It is like 6.30 in the morning. Hi, Bill. We're going through our schedule. We're gonna go look for some poison dart frogs. We are taking a coffee break. Having this coffee here is priceless. Abel is a researcher. What is the name of your university? Universidad Autónoma de Chiriquí. You've published how many papers? More than 30 by now. And describe near 30 species. Frogs, snakes, lizards. You know, this is probably the highest quality of a nature guide or herping guide that you can get. You know, he's not just a nature guide. He's a real scientist and he's a well accomplished scientist as well. This is gonna be the best video of the entire trip for sure. Now we are cleaning up our coffee station that we made out here in the jungle. The rain is coming down. So I have not introduced Michelle yet, who is a former student of Abel. We got snake hooks in case we find any snakes. Hello, Lisa. Check if he's male or female. A male. Males has this two lap. They have the emi pennies and they have two pennies. One going out from this side and the other one. You need to be very careful and watch out for further lands. Wow. You need to be very careful when you handle. Wrap them very softly. There's slightly pressure here. But when they, they feel trapped, they start sweating. Toxins. The toxins. Alkaloids and other stuff and you can smell it if i have uh, for example a cut a cut or something then i can get the venom through this and feel like a pain and irritation probably swelling but not much as other species for example in the chocoa region of darien and colombia oh, okay they are really toxic these no they are more colorful than toxics <laughs> full of uh, pumilio, strawberry poison frog. Wow. This is an uh, Ophaga pumilio. Genus of this uh, species means uh, that eats eggs. They eat eggs, okay. O means eggs and Faga eats. When the female put like their eggs on a bromeliad or another small recipient with water, right? because it's too small, there are not enough food, food for the tadpoles. And then time to time the females the female comes and lie eggs, infertile eggs, to the tadpoles and then the tadpole feed the those eggs. First of all the, the, the female lie the eggs in a wet area. And when the tadpole hatch, they they take the tadpoles to the bromeliad or another uh, right. water recipient. So they lay their eggs on the forest floor and then they bring them up the tree yeah. into a bromeliad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this green animal, the scientific na name is Anolis biporcatus, is quite common in lowlands. People here believe that this is venomous. I caught one of these and a guy in front of me almost cried because Hey, what are you doing? This is too venomous, release that please. Absolutely not poison, no toxin, anything. It brings up this theme of bridging the gap between science and the public, right? To teach the people how to, to, to understand the nature. Yeah, there are a lot of myths about the nature that are not really true. Those believe they just go and kill this peaceful animal that is harmless, absolutely. Now we are heading back, going back across this treacherous swamp. <laughs> days when I was a kid I had a set of plastic poison dart frogs to see them in real life it's just a dream by coming on a tour like this you get brought to areas that I would say definitely are quote-unquote off of the beaten tourist path it is all locals here you know not the big neon signs of any tourist zone this is one amazing adventure we're having today right yeah, yeah. <laughs> And now we are gonna go out on the boat, right? Yeah. And now we are going on this boat ride. It's gonna be friggin' awesome. Call the 
land and let's go find these frogs. Some hard work by this stud, both Abel and Michelle, the MVH's most valuable herpers. We have landed in our next destination and Abel and Michelle are up there in the forest and I'm just waiting down here. So as we wait, I'm just speaking Spanish with Vincente and Cornelio talking about how beautiful this place is, how beautiful the nature is. We were all just agreeing that it's just so awesome just to sometimes just to sit and listen and observe. Cornelio, he's not a big fan of frogs, but his favorite animals are actually birds. Yeah, he likes the, the toucans and the parrots. Los tucanes y los loros. Two his favoritos, no? See? Si? Quiere ser un biólogo? Yeah, see, si, he just nodded. So we got another future biologist right here. All right, Michelle has a frog for us. And like, how to, oh wow. So the way that Abel and Michelle know where the frogs are are because they make this noise. I'm about to start freestyle rapping but I can't freestyle, so I'm not gonna embarrass myself. Well, that was awesome. Another morph down, so we've seen four different morphs. The frogs are awesome, but what's just as awesome is it's just an absolutely gorgeous place here. Flickering through memories, the Polaroids yellowed in the sun. Longing to be seen, so come and hide. Now we are off to go find some more frogs in another place. The species of frogs we're gonna go see now, they're, they're smuggled as illegal pets. People come and ask the locals right. to catch the frogs to export them illegally. I want to, to do is to show the people, bring the people to these spots to make understand the people that the value of these species to keep these species within their habitat, which is very important. Entonces, uh, Michelle, ¿qué uh, te inspiró para ser un bióloga? Que me inspiró más que todo el hecho de... When I asked Michelle how she became a biologist, she explained that growing up in a place where she was surrounded by a lot of nature had a big influence on her. She spent much time in the cloud forest around her house observing her surroundings and became curious about them. In school, she chose to study biology and her teacher's enthusiasm was passed on to her. I must also mention that Michelle is an accomplished scientist. For her thesis research, she described the natural history of an endemic and endangered species of frog in Panama, one in which very little was known before. A huge part of becoming interested in something is experiencing something. Therefore, if you love nature and reach out to other people, you can change someone's perspective. You never know. Be like this guy. <laughs> and we are stopping at one more place, it looks like. Como se llama el morfo de este amphibio? El que vamos a buscar es amarillo con negro. Amarillo con negro. Okay, so we're looking for a black and yellow. Like the song by Wiz Khalifa. Black and yellow, black and yellow. Do you want to see? Yes. Do So we just found another frog. We're holding one guy here. Oh, throw a space here. He's another morph. 
as soon as we get up here we find this guy which is another species and then we find the morph of Camillo that we were looking for it's the smallest poison frogs in, in Panama the smallest are, poison frog the smallest poison frog in Panama one of them yeah this uh... wow so we have like four or five frogs right here right now that we're looking at I'm trying to be careful where I step I don't want to step on any frogs Deciding to grow some balls and touch this guy. My father told me. This is an Adinovates claudiae. It's an endemic species. Yeah, this is an endemic species of poison frog from Panama. Wow. Yeah. And you said and this is an adult. That's an adult? Yeah. Like, I bet what, four of those could sit on a penny? I've been here several times, but I never see before. This is a very small one. This is a male, has a black throat, and this uh, sky blue pattern in the band. This oh. is very special. So it's endemic? It's endemic. Wait, so, so you've never seen it here before? No, in this this place not. So has anyone seen it here before? No. How are you going to document this? I have to check how far, how many kilometers is uh, from the la from the other record. If, if enough, we can write a short publication of, of that. This is just so amazing because this is real science in action. Abel actually might write a publication out of this discovery he had right now because he's never seen this species of frog at this site. It's an endemic species of Panama and it's just fascinating. And the coolest thing about this frog is it's so tiny. Like I said earlier, like five of them could fit on a freaking penny. Right here, we saw yeah, right five here. species. Right here. Five species all within 25 square meters. Yeah. This is just what being a naturalist is all about. It's a dream, an absolute dream. Now we are on our way back, back to the side of the highway. <laughs> Goodbye, random trail on the side of the highway. Looking for wildlife, whether it's birds or frogs, just brings you to like kind of random places. It makes it adventurous. We pulled over on the side of the road, took a random trail, like who knows where we are. Abel and I then had a long conversation about the conservation of amphibians in Panama. In Panama specifically, what are the biggest threats to amphibians? He said that deforestation and the illegal pet trade are two of the biggest threats, but another huge threat is the disease chytridiomycosis, which is caused by an invasive species of chytrid fungus that can infect the skin of amphibians and has been detrimental to populations of amphibians all throughout the world. It is thought to have spread throughout the world from the African clawed frog, which was immune to its effect and was transported to many labs for research on human pregnancy tests. In those mountains, it was the first time reported in Panama. No way. In 1995, more or less. That's where the chytrid fungus was yeah, first reported in, in those mountains right there. Yeah. And what are those mountains called? A Fortuna. A Fortuna. Abel then explained that he had been studying frogs at a field site near Darien in 2011 and 2012, where he discovered and described a number of species new to science. Then he went back to study in the same place in 2015 to 2017, and he could not find some of the new species he had discovered. They were possibly extinct. Even more sad is that in those years, I found some species that were new for science. In 2015, I came back to the same spots, the same areas. In those years, I didn't see several species that I found in 2012 and 11. To go into the same place, same spots, and no frogs. Really they could have gone extinct before they were even researched. I mean, right after you discovered them. And currently, I'm, I'm working on the descriptions of several others. And I will describe probably some of them that are gone already. 
there can be organisms that go extinct even before they're really described and researched or even before they're discovered at all due to a lot of reasons. Yeah, the chytrid fungus is a really sad story. But the frogs that we're looking at today, Familio, they have had chytrid fungus found on their skin, but fortunately they've actually done pretty well with it. The chytrid fungus mostly affects highland species of amphibians, which is a problem because you find more endemics in the highlands. Conservation is harder with species that have restricted ranges that are endemic to only uh, you know small parts of the world. The surrounding the nature is absolutely incredible. And it's something that you may need to, uh, to take in a bus when you visit uh, Panama, not just Panama but other countries as well. Go out contact locals and go just to the jungle and enjoy it. Hear the noise of the frogs, of the birds. I already said that a bell is a stud. I would say he's the next step up from a stud. A bell is probably the greatest nature guide that I've ever had. It's just so much more enriching to go with a nature guide that knows how science works, that has published studies, he's discovered new species. He might be a nature nerd, but he's also really cool too, right? Nature nerds can be cool too. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome always. Well, thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to go on a wildlife tour with Los Naturalistas, I will post a link to their website and their social media below so you can contact them. Not only do they do herping tours, but they do all kinds of wildlife tours. You can customize your tour. For my tour, I paid $200, which sounds pretty expensive for a budget traveler, but they told me that you can split the price among a number of different people. So for example, if you split that price between three different people, it is way less. Also, if you want to see more vlogs like this, where I show you cool places in the world to go and see wildlife, or if you want to learn more about how to better your experience observing nature in the field, not only do I do vlogs like this, but I do things like app and gear reviews, fun natural history lessons, and much more. So if you're interested, hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications so that you're actually notified when I post new videos. Thank you very much and peace out.